Um, we're going to get started at 9.05 like we always do. Make sure you share the video. Make sure you share the live. Um, yeah, for those that are going to watch it, make sure you also share it. Share it wherever you can share it. Like, please. I love you for it. All right. So, before we get started, I want, to, want you guys to make sure that if you're looking for Chat with Miller, the playlist for this week, you head on over to Spotify. It's already live on Spotify. After I go off of here, um, will be the playlist will be live on <laughs> the playlist. The playlist will be live on Apple Music as well. So I want you guys to make sure you head on over there and download the playlist, listen to it throughout the week. There are also other playlists that are available, so you guys can check those out as well. All right. I, I hope you guys had an amazing and amazing and amazing weekend. Um, we're about to get it get popping with what's going on in the news. And then we're gonna get into our topics. So I hope y'all ready. Alright, so the mess. Here we go. That's a Raven, the future that we didn't see. We didn't want to see at all. So if you guys remember him, he was on That's a Raven. He was a little brother. His name is, however, Cal Massey. <sighs> y'all. Buddy O'Pal has So Cal Massey is to be sued for sex this this lawsuit or civil suit actually has not been filed just yet. It is in the works though. Um that's so future that's so Raven um star. He was a star. Cal Massey is being sued for 1.5 million dollars in a civil suit. I don't even think this boy got that much money. Here we go. But Kyle, who is now 27, you know, we probably thought he was still like 16. However, he was, he's being sued for sending sexually explicit messages to a 13 year old, a 13 year old. He is now 27. Um, the boy done sent all his nudes. The boy, that boy done sent all his nudes to this little 13 year old. If he did it, this is allegedly, allegedly. He sent his nudes to a 13-year-old, and I guess the parents um, are suing. Yeah. Now, he claims that it's extortion. Petty, I agree with you. He he claimed it... 27. He looks 48. Oh, my God. Fix it, baby. Jesus. Listen. He, um... So, he claims it's extortion. He claims that the people are trying to set him up. He, he um... He says they're trying to get money out of him. <sighs> This type of case and this type of response from the accuser um, is becoming old because honestly, I really don't know what to believe. And everybody that is tried nowadays, I'm sorry, you're innocent until proven guilty. And I would hope he wouldn't do this, but there is said to be explicit text messages floating around and yeah, he out there. Here's another thing. And this is something that I want, really wanted to tap in for a little bit is because black men, I was talking to a Caucasian lady today and she was, you know, um, she just, and not just black men, men period, but black men, especially in the entertainment business, you guys are now a target. You are a target. Hip hop, actors, politicians, no matter what angle you coming at, like you are a target now. Like, you were a target before, but you're really a target now. So, any way they can get you, even if they got to set it up and use their children. Ugh. Use their children. That's what they're doing. So, you really got to be smart. Be careful. Check IDs. Do all these types of things before you get into a bed. Like, it's, 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 it's a smart thing to do. It, it really is. And, 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 and on the flip side, parents, know what your children are doing. Honestly, take away cell phones until they're 18. I don't know. I really don't know what we can do to resolve this. But let me see. Let me see what you, I'm going to get what you, what you guys are saying in a little bit. But parents, do a better job at parenting. Know what your children are watching. Get into their cell phones. Know who they're texting. Know who they're calling. Know what sites they're on. Go do their history. Be a parent. Be a parent. That's all. Like, straight up. Like, on the flip side, I hold men accountable because there are some cases where men are guilty and on the on the other flip side where children are at risk i hope parents 
partially responsible. I won't say fully responsible, but I, I hold parents partially responsible. It starts at home. Do your job. Do your job. Don't just give them a phone to shut them up. You know the typical. Don't just give them a phone to shut them up, but do your job. Let me see what you guys are saying. They've been selling that. They've been selling that baby to him. Wow. Where he going to get 1.5 million dollars from? LOL, they need a reboot for That's So Raven. They have a That's So Raven reboot. The cast of the show is crazy. She She crazy and he's nasty. That got me LOL. Oh god. Maybe his brother has the baby. Oh. Yeah! Crazy part is when parents find out the kids know celebrities, first thing they do is figure out. True story. Um, that's the thing. Although I didn't like it, my parents were parents. Straight up. I have a parent control on my teenage phone and I do phone checks. Don't play. Like, do not play. There are pedophiles in this world. There are pedophiles. And they all are not black men. I just want to say that. But... They are not all. They are not all black men, and they are not all men. Protect your children. Get in their phones. Know what they're doing. Know her. My mom was so irky. She wanted to be all my friends. She had conversations with them. She wanted their parents' phone numbers. She, I didn't even have a cell phone until I was probably like seventeen or eighteen. I remember taking my mom's phone because I was like, everybody got a cell phone, man. I, I ain't got no phone. Like, what, what am I? Like, but those types of. Those type of mechanisms, those type of trainings actually protected me from a whole lot. Now, I got into some stuff, but it protected me from a whole lot. So, parents, I'm not saying you're not doing a good job. I'm not saying, oh, my God, you know, parents suck. But get on your job for your kid's sake. We get it. They can be annoying sometimes. They can be irritating. But they're your children. You laid down and had them. Now, handle your responsibility. That's that's it. Uh, up next. Oh. Uh, up next, we have our girl. Just phobia is what I'm going to start calling her. That that's, <laughs> eh. and this face is just my expression. All right, so Jess is back in the news. Okay, so Jess is now not too long ago. Let's let's lead up to this. Why I'm calling her Jess phobia, and I love Jess. I really do love Jess. Um, but. I'm calling her just phobia because it seems like every other week they're sl slapping on some type of phobia. Before it was, you know, she called a guy in the comment in the comments a fag. He was he he had said something offensive to her. Her back her her comeback or clap back was pretty much a fag. Whatever. All right. Um. So they they knocked her down with a homophobic slur. Now she's back in the news with Islam phobia. I don't even know what that is. I. Well, you can make 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 it make sense, but what is that? What is anyway? So pretty much, just post it, and this is why I get it. You're a social media celebrity, but this is why you should be very mindful of what you post on social media. Where's PR? This, where, where where are these people? Where, where where's PR? Like nobody handles these types of things anymore. Are we are celebrities just left to their own devices now? That's what we're doing. All right. So pretty much, she got on a plane. And I guess four Muslim Islam um, or three or four Muslim Islam guys got on, you know, they had on, you know, their dress codes or whatever they wear, you know. Um, and she pretty much posted a video saying that she was scared of them. She was scared as crap. Um, so and then I guess after a while, the guys were removed from the plane. And then she posted a video pretty much saying, you know, and I'm glad they're gone. Um, it was scary. I understand it can be frightening and it's because we really do not understand. But she did go too far. And when Jess is wrong, like for the homophobic slur, eh, you get a pass. This slur, it was slightly offensive because this is their, you know, this is their native wear, whatever they do. Um, and I feel as though she took the wrong approach. Like if you're, keep it to yourself, Jess. You get up and move. Like, but... That's why Jess is in the, in, the, in the news. Let me see what you guys are saying. I think it's xenophobia. Okay. Asalaam. Asalaam, big. Oh, my God. Um, okay, okay, okay. Wow, yeah. I think it's too far. Be mindful. You can't just say anything. And here's on the flip side. Okay. Okay. Because we would have went off if Roseanne did that about a black man in a hoodie. Absolutely. 
And, but here's on the flip side. This is just me playing the devil's advocate because it's just like, eh. Um, have we just become so sensitive as a culture? Or are we really standing up for what we believe in? Are we really standing up for our beliefs? Um, because it's still a little sensitive. Because imagine, she's a comedian. And we know comedians to be harsh. They're, they're very outspoken with how they feel whatever comes to the top of you know whatever comes to their mind they're saying it and honestly sometimes low key is what we're all thinking right so are we be are, are we still becoming so sensitive is, is everything a phobia is something wrong with everything everybody says because i feel as though if we were to go this cookie cutter route or whatever i do think a lot of people would be jobless, um, but I just don't know. I just feel like you know we're being a little sensitive sometimes. Sometimes in this case, just you're wrong. I, I, I'll say it. She is wrong, but I also think that we're we're as a people we're becoming extremely sensitive um, to certain things. But let's see what you guys are saying. She was out of line. There is no devil <laughs> devil's advocate to play. What happened? What I missed? Because um, we would have went. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Freedom of speech. Where's that? I, I know she's wrong. She's wrong. She's wrong. There's no. I love Jess. I really do. I think she's. Uh, I think she's actually funny. I. I really do. Other comedians. I don't know yet. All right. Here we go. Moving on. The real. Um. Made the mess because. I believe. I believe they are one-sided. I, I do believe sometimes they report certain things, um, and they're 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 one-sided with their opinions. And um, recently, the game came out, and okay, he's another one that's wrong. <laughs> but my problem is with the real. Now I will admit that the game was wrong. So pretty much the game, the game, the rapper called um, Fox News anchor. Tori Lauren, or whatever her name is, a cum gargling, microwave skin, 90 year old white man body having slut. So the real pretty much, you know, pulled him up about it and said, you know, that's no way to talk to women. So he came on and he defended himself and pretty much said, I said what I said um, in defense of what she said about 21 Savage. So I don't know if you guys remember, but she's she's been about she's been behind as Fox News anchors are most of the time behind a lot a lot of racial um racist comments um so she was one of those so he was pretty much firing back um to what she said about 21 savage to what she's also said about african-american men what she said about black people in general so he was just firing back hold up let me see what you guys are saying game and 50 are my spirit animals but they go too far now i do think they go too far 50 cent especially especially he goes for the kill like to to infinity and beyond um i thought it was funny but i also was glad that i wish it was a man i really do wish it was a man because it's 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 bad enough that as black men we're represented in media as scary figures so for this to kind of happen it, it's just not a good look however i'm glad somebody clapped back i'm glad somebody actually stood up and said you know what you can't talk about black people this way we're gonna say this about you boom but the real um never has never you know came against her for saying any of the racist things that she said but they quickly defended um defended her when he was simply expressing his opinion doing what she normally does most of the time that's that's all Fox News is, is opinions. The opinions of others is what they really should be called. But, let's see. What you guys are saying, 50 is definitely Buzz Lightyear, baby. That's good, friend. All right, so I'm gonna move on. <laughs> Next up, we have Mr. Rick Singer. Rick Singer, wrong key, girl, it's bad. This is bad. Now, you guys are probably looking at this screen like, who the heck is this man, Jamal? Jamal, who is, who is this man? Who this man you got plastered up on the screen? 
All right, we're about to get into it. So this is the guy. I don't know if you guys have been following the news with Felicity Hoffman, and I think it was another celebrity. Um, they're behind this college scam where they were paying, um, pretty much paying for their students, their kids to get into prestigious colleges or whatever. All right, so <laughs> he looked like he was on Cheers. I know exactly what you're talking about. All right, um, I don't know if he was on Cheers. I don't know. Anyway. So he's behind the biggest college um, college admission scam, um, you know, like I said, involving Felicity Hoffman. So pretty much, now here's the petty part. Here, here's the extremely petty part. Um, <laughs> he sold college admissions to wealthy white people, pretty much selling the spots that a lot of minorities would have gotten or could have gotten, um, but he sold them to wealthy white people. Um, now here, okay, here's another petty part. Y'all thought that was petty. Here we go. Um, he also targeted um, programs and scholarship foundations that were created for um, African-American students and used the funds to further prop up privileged white students. So pretty much what he was doing was applying to certain foundations for funding for these students that he was pretty much getting into... Um, getting into college and pretty much lying on the application saying they were black when they were white and getting them money crazy right now African Americans we have a hard time as it is paying for college and here we have this guy like now low key had he been doing this for black people it probably would have never got out it probably it probably would have never got out and a lot of people's college would have been paid off however he did it for somebody. Um, he's been doing it actually for years, and I, I want to say the this case, the the scam, the money that you know he scammed people out of, or not even just scam people out of, but the money that he has scammed, I think was over millions of dollars, over millions of dollars. Yo, this tan says you can't trust me. Yo, it is unbelievable to me that this guy would go so far. Like, this is crazy to me. One, you had the balls to go to black organizations and say, hey, I have this kid applying for this prestigious school, knowing he was a, it was a white kid, and you were pretty much scamming it off to be a white kid. I mean, you were scamming it to be a black kid, but it was really a white kid that you were covering up. Yo... Yo, I feel impartial for this story because he's going to jail. Period. Period. <laughs> Yo, it is crazy out here. It is so freaking crazy out here. But yeah, he's going down and it looks like Felicity Hoffman Hoffman could be facing some time as well. And it was another lady. I think she was on what was the show with um oh, what is the name of the show? Not Family Matters, Full House. She was on Full House. Remember, I think it was Joey's girlfriend. So she she's involved in the cases cases. Well, pretty much they pay for their kids to get into school. I mean, sounds right. Or they, I think they paid to, for them to get into procedures. Read up on it, y'all. It, it is a read, and it's honestly not getting as much light as it should. So read up on it. Get out there, Aunt Becky. It's funny. Let me see what y'all are saying. Full House, Lori Laughlin, yes, and her husband, absolutely. Um, he set up a fake nonprofit. In fairness, he said minority, not black. Yeah, all right. <laughs> oh my God. Lori donated over five hundred five hundred thousand dollars. My name Helen, and I ain't telling. Listen, Rick, just tell me how you did it, bro. Just, just, just tell me, tell me how you did it. I, I got, I got um, tuition to pay for. If you want to help a brother out. If you want to help her brother out, here I am. My name is Jamal Miller. Yo, like, help me. Help me. That's Sally Mae. When is somebody going to scam Sally Mae? When is somebody going to take Sally Mae out? Sally Mae been robbing people forever. Forever. When is somebody going to get her? When is somebody going to get her? Get her. <laughs> take Sally out. Lord, I'm sick of Sally. I'm sick of Sally. Oh my God. Say hi, Jamal. 
Yeah, you had to think because you know they be coming, they be pulling up stuff. Like I'm pretty sure the CIA, FBI is recording all of these, and one day they're gonna take everybody down. I I, I don't know. <laughs> Listen, forget a government shutdown. Shut that Brian Sally down. Listen, Sally a hoe, and she been out here wrecking homes and finances for forever. We need we need her taken down. We need her taken down. But. Yeah, Rick Singer, you're going to jail. And that's that's what it is. All right, so up next, we have... I don't know if you guys will be able to see this, but yes, you can. All right, so we have our girl. So last week, I think we talked about Leandria. And pretty much, I don't know if you guys seen this, but I actually enjoyed part one, and I can't wait for part two. However, I'm calling this the mess because Leandria, Leandria's last name is no longer Johnson. It's Van Zandt because um, Iyanla mothered the crap out of Leandria during this episode. And she gave her a truth that I think a lot of people, not just gospel artists, but people in church really need. And um, I think it was so needed. And I'm glad that Leandria showed so much vulnerability. She also showed transparency, which she is known for. Um, and but I, shout out to shout, shout out to Iyanla Van, Van Zandt. A lot of people don't like her, you know, mechanisms and ways of you know doing things. But I think for this, she did an awesome job. Um, and I can't wait to see how she really gets to the root of everything. And another thing I like that she called out was she called out her circle of friends. And she pretty much told her your circle of friends are not good for you because they're just enabling you to keep doing what you're doing because they're really making a profit off, off of you. And honestly, that's the truth she needed to hear. Like a lot of people, I feel like when you get a certain, a certain amount of clout, they start leeching to you and they get whatever they can get from you. And honestly, they're your friend. But honestly, they just really want the benefit for what's for them. So, uh, and shout out to Phil Thornton. I did talk to him after after I saw the episode because it was a hard it was a hard thing for him to do to pretty much say get yourself together or your contract is null and void. When it's your friend and you're in business, it's very hard because when it comes to making those tough decisions, it's hard. I think this one was on point. Yeah. Now I always agree with Yana. Y'all know I call her my mother. That's my girl. But, um, yeah, I, I, I think it was definitely on point. That mouth is a little slick, though. <laughs> she is slick because I was watching... This is a little off topic. But I was watching this... Um, I was watching this episode, and she pretty much... she held, This thing she has when she holds somebody's hand and tells them the truth, she held this lady's hand, and she said, Babies, your mama is a crackhead. <laughs> you know? The way I lost it. The way I was like screaming, like, did she just do, did you? Okay, you did, you did that. Like, she, yo, it was extremely hilarious. But shout out to, shout out to Leandria for doing this, for taking a stand, for kind of giving the church a new perspective on, you know, the things that it's okay to open up about. Like, we're so closed off and let God handle it and let God fix it. And I ain't telling nobody, but you never know the very thing that you can go, that you're going through could help so many people um and shout out to all the people that were watching that were cheering her on like i didn't really see anything negative towards leandra but i saw a lot of things negative towards iyanla um but shout out shout out to everybody that was watching and i can't wait for next week i think it comes on next saturday same time same place but whenever it comes on make sure you guys tune in all right we're moving on we need to stop covering up our pain iyanla vinzat will fix it yes she will i screamed at that she needed that eye opener because you gotta be strong. Yeah. Um, let me see, let me see, let me see. She doesn't know how to be a mama. <laughs> I love her. I love her. I love her. All right. Okay. I'm looking at some of these. <laughs> Yo, I'm looking at some of these topics that you guys have submitted, and it's crazy. Um, okay, so we're getting to our special shout outs. Our special shout outs this week go to who are they? Okay, Eva Marcel and her husband. I don't know his name, but you guys will find it out if you look up on some blog or some type of Wikipedia page, whatever. Eva Marcel got married um, on the last episode of the season finale of Real Housewives of Atlanta. It was a beautiful wedding. Eva looked amazing. Um, the wedding was really great. Uh, it was a little weird because her husband did refer to her as God. 
I got to rewatch it so I can really get to meet Michael Sterling. Thank you so much. Um, I, re- I got to rewatch it so I can really get the meaning behind that because I didn't get that, bro. Um, a lot of people were trying to clown him a little bit because he wrote down his vows. If you're like me, when I get married, my vows will also be written down because I'm forgetful. And I want to make sure that I say everything in that moment. So I ain't knocking him for that. But that guy comment, buddy, we got to check that out. Um, also, let me see. Did you guys say anything yet? Michael Sterling is his name. Okay. Um all right, so we're going to move on to our, our next shout-out is... Um, our next shout-out goes to Jewel Jones. So I don't know if you guys know who this is, but Jewel Jones is one of the youngest state representatives in Michigan's history. He's doing his thing. Um, shout-out to this young guy. I think he's like 24, maybe 27. But he is one of the youngest House representatives in the state of Michigan, and he's doing his thing. I heard him speak. He's very well-spoken. He has great points. I can't wait to see what the future holds for him. Um, Also, shout-out to the family of Janice Freeman. Um, She recently passed, um, but she was such a beautiful soul, and she will definitely be missed. She had an awesome talent, an awesome gift, and a beautiful voice. Um, So we'll definitely miss her. And shout out to her family. Our prayers and condolences still go out to you guys. Um, All right, moving on to something lighter. Um, We have, listen, I don't know what Janet Jackson, Jennifer Lopez, Cicely Tyson even, and this darn Angela Bassett, I don't know what the heck they're drinking. I don't know what the heck they're drinking. Like, Angela Bassett looks good. Bro. Like, she looks good. I don't know what other way to put it. This woman looks amazing. Like, drinking Jesus. Gotta be. Jesus gotta be in whatever she's drinking. And the only thing she's drinking, she looks good. Um, And she doesn't have an Oscar. Right, Sid. She doesn't have an Oscar. Screw the Academy. Listen, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a create an award called They Did That. They, we need a They Did That award. Like, and that let that be bigger than the Oscar. Something, something fancy. I don't, I don't know. But she is well deserving of an Oscar. She has given us iconic performances on the screen for my whole lifetime. All right. Um. Yeah. Special shout out. I'm, I'm gonna keep this up here for a little while because I think we all need to see how great. Um, Angela Bassett looks. Shout out to Courtney B. Vance, man. God bless you. I don't know who you fighting, who you got to beat up, but your wife looks good, man. She looks, she looks good. Okay, somebody said, hold on. Sidebar, friend, what's wrong with Trick Daddy's face? So, and then I think somebody said lupus, but I think crack. I don't know. He's he looks a little embalmed, doesn't he? I don't I don't know what's what's going on, but I wish him well, and I hope him and Trina can figure it out. Um, I, I really do. I hope they figure it out and come up with this album. I'm not even looking forward to it, honestly. Real talk, like Trina can do fine by herself. Trick Daddy, I, whatever. Don't nobody care about that album. Ain't nobody ever cared about that album. It's like that meme. That says nobody, and then Trick and Trina, we coming out. <laughs> Trick and Trina says we coming out with new music, you know, our joint album or whatever they say. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. <laughs> anyway, moving on. I, I gotta get in the chat with Miller Top Ten. Now, as I stated before, the top ten are. It is now live on um, Spotify. So if you go to Spotify, you can type in hashtag Chat with Miller. Three slash, what's today? Three slash 18 um, slash 19. And you'll be able to find <laughs> the um, the playlist on Spotify. Some really dope stuff. All right. So top 10 coming in at number 10. I don't know if you guys know who this is, but this is Candice Pillay. Um, her, her song Party for the Low made number 10. I love this song. It's pretty dope. I like this song. Now her other music, can we really get into but I love this song. So make sure you guys check it out. Um, go check her out. She's pretty dope. Um, coming in at number nine is Jessica, Jessica Reedy. I'm actually glad to have her and her smile back. 
Um, um, but she has this song called Can't Hold Me Back. It's dope. It's gospel. Check it out. Um, coming in at number eight is Gene Hoskins with Jesus We Love You. I love this song. He's a new artist. He's really doing his thing. He was featured on Jonathan Nelson's album. Go get his music. Support him. He sings. Like, seriously. Um, also, now, You On You, this song right here is so dope. And I'm actually proud of the Britney. Um, so, um, go get her music because it's super dope. It's super crazy. It's super good. I like this song, though. This song is good. Uh, six. Coming in at number six, one of my favorite new artists, uh, Ray Louise. She's amazing. I love this song, honestly. She has a whole bunch of new music. New music. But check out this song on um, Chat with Miller Playlist. It's so dope. I love it. It's true. I love... I love lyric and melody. Melody, lyric and melody. If you give me good lyric and melody, you're good. Um, but if you also top that off with good, great vocals, I'm sold. Coming in at number five is him. Now we all know her, but now there is a him, and he has he has a whole album. Um, it's pretty much in response to her, um, but it's super dope, and he can sing. So you guys might want to check that out. Um, and in at number four, we have. Now, I know y'all ain't gonna like this, but I don't care. Um, but we have Jump, featuring Jesse Smollett um, from the Empire cast. Um, I like this song. I think it's I think it's fun. It's good. Now, I usually don't like his songs, but I like this song. Um, and at number three is Gene Noble, featuring Keisha Renee with For Granted. This song was submitted by Amari. I don't know if he's in here. But this song was submitted by Amari. It's super dope. I love this song. I can't stop listening to it. And both of them on this song sing down. So, go get it. Um, I also, in at number two is Good To You by T-S, I mean, TXS. Pretty good song. Pretty great song. It's amazing. Great lyric. Great vibe. Great wave. Whatever you want to call it. It's good. Um, and in at number one. I hope I don't mess up her name, but it's X um, by Diana. Diana, go get her music. Like, yo, this song right here is such a vibe. It's a dope vibe. Go get it. And ladies and gentlemen, that concludes Chat with Miller Top 10. If you want to find the playlist on Spotify, it is live now. All right, it's on Spotify. And as soon as I am off the air, it will be available on Apple Music. So make sure you guys go get it. All right. So, moving on into our topics. Now, we got a lot of topics. I don't even know why. Y'all are still... Y'all are submitting these topics. I'm going to just show y'all some of the stuff that comes through these topics. A lot of people really don't believe that these topics get crazy. All right? So, here's a topic. Do you have a phrase? This was a submission. Like, you know, yes, I always and forever will have a phrase. Yes. Okay. Here's another one. Which one of your coworkers is really a man? Yo. This is the stuff that is submitted. Like, so we're about to get into some of the chatted up topics. I hope I can get to all of them tonight. All right, so chat it up. Once you love someone, do you always love them? I'm gonna, like I always do, I'm gonna let you guys formulate your response and then I'm gonna chime in. So. Hopefully you guys can see this up now and then you can, you know, get it going. All right. Once you love someone, do you always love them? I believe. So I believe that there's a difference between being in love with somebody and loving, loving someone. I think you'll always love someone. You just may not always love them the same way. That's just my opinion. That, that's just my opinion. Let me see what you guys are saying. Yes, I may not like you, um, no love lost, but I will dismiss, hold on, let me read. I will dismiss Be Great in Your Lavender. Oh my God. Yes, I just got off the phone with my ex and I had to express my love for him um, for me to really move on. That's good. Um, we will talk about that later. I think so. Even if it ended badly, you will still hold on to what was good about that person. Yep. All right, cool. So, yes, loving someone and being in love is different. I mean, I, I, and that's, that's how I define if I always love a person. Because I do think you can always, you will always love someone. Once you love someone, you'll always love them. Because 
even hate, I don't think, can drown out love. Um, but yeah, I think once you once you love someone, you'll always love them. You'll you'll always love them. Uh, even if you hate them, you'll still have love for whatever it was that made you love them. Like that's why they always tell you, you know, if if you fall out of love. Um, if you fall out of love, think of the first time you fell in love with them. What was that thing? What made you fall in love with them? Now, if it's a lie, and you fell in love with a lie, baby, roll on with life. Carry on. Go on the hell on. All right, next topic is... Yes. All right, is there a limit, is there a time limit you should give someone before moving on? Now, I actually have a, had a conversation so I can explain it a little bit better so you guys can better formulate your responses. Is there a time limit you should give someone before moving on? Like, I guess if you just broke up with somebody, do you give them a certain amount of time to kind of come back, make it better, and, you know, think about moving on? Is there a time limit you should give someone before moving on? Listen, now I'm going to answer this question. Y'all can, can chime in as well. I personally believe that when it is over, if we break up, I'm moving on. Like, I'm moving on and not to somebody just immediately, but I'm moving on to my healing. Because I don't have time to sit and wait in a broken heart for you to actually think that maybe I messed up. You messed up, but I'm on my way to my healing. And it's going to take a whole lot for you to drag me back here to reconsider going through what I just went through. Nah, I'm sorry. Let me see what y'all are saying. Now, if we break up, I'm done. I can't say that I'm done, but if we break up and it's new and, you know, there's some thought going into something, it may take, you know, I'm, I may turn an ear to reconsidering some things. However, when it's over, when it's over and done, and the heartache lives on, I gotta head towards my healing. I can't, I can't, uh -uh, I can't stay here. I can't stay here and wait for you. I gotta get out of this. I gotta move on. I can't sit, I can't sit with the blinds closed. Give me some sunshine, some sun, sunshine, cause my heart is cloudy. <laughs> I, need, I need some sunshine. I ain't finna sit here. I ain't finna sit here and do this. Nope. I'm going to get me a bottle of wine. I'm going to call my friends and we're going to do what we got to do to get over this. The friends that drink because all of my friends don't drink. They'll come over with Bible verses and that's fine. That is fine. That is fine. However, however, I am not staying here waiting. Now, I, 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 there's no time limit, bro. There's no time limit. There, there, there's no time limit. Sorry. Uh -uh, I ain't give you a couple of days to make up your mind about what you agreed to. You agreed that we break up. So, Whew, all right. Let me see what y'all are saying. Um, no, if we break up, that's it. No, if we break up, I'm done. If we broke up, why do I care how long it takes you to move on? If it could be fixed, it wouldn't be over. That's not always true because some people make hastily decisions. Is that the right word? They make fast. They make decisions fast and they don't think it through. So, yeah. Um, I am the same way. If I got to that place to break up, I am done. I get it. You're so nice. It makes it makes me itch. You are goals, to be honest. Thank you. Um, come on, DC3. Wine and friends. Hello? Um, people be wanting you to stay available for convenience. Oh, I'm glad you said that. People always want you to stay available. Like, I don't even mean to put somebody out like, I, I look at this. But I received a phone call. And it was more so, the phone call made me feel a certain way because in my mind, I feel as though, and I had to let this person know, listen, I got, I got a bed. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm in a happy and healthy relationship. Like, I'm not, nah. I, because I feel like they expected me to sit around and wait for them to get it together. Wrong dude. Listen, I got some good genes and I got a little bit more youth in my face. So... I know I look all right. I know I look all right. Huh? Huh? So, I've been out here. <laughs> I've been out here, and I've been dating. I've been going out to clubs. No, sorry. Dad, pastor, grandpa, if y'all watch this. But I've been there. I've been there. I've been looking for love in some of the wrong places and some of the right ones. And I found it. I didn't sit around and wait. So, 
yeah. But yeah, never be, never sit. We gotta get into the next topic because y'all, y'all giving away all my topics. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Stop howling. People, we yes, 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 yes. Huh? I've been going out to the clubs. Listen, and I will continue doing me. All right. So next topic is let's see. So. All right, if you know someone is the one for you, should you wait for them? I mean, this is a little different, but it's the same little teaching, huh? So, if you know someone is the one for you, they should know they're the one for you, right? If you know someone is the one for you, they should also know they're the one for you. And if they are the one for you, then it would be common sense for you guys to be together. Now, granted, some people move on and they get into situations and, you know, you be waiting on the side, waiting for them to be single. It's dumb. It's stupid. Live your life. Live your life. Never sit around and wait for anybody who continuously makes you an option. I don't care how much they say they love you. If they loved you, they showed a little bit better. If they wanted to be with you, they wouldn't wait to divorce or break up. Or get out of a situationship, they would get out of it and be with you. So live your life. Stop sitting on the sidelines. You know, get in, get go on and get in there. Go on, go on and make your choice. Now, if you want to sit on the side and be a little side side piece, that's the nicest way I can say it. Then that's your choice. However, I'm telling you, there are a million fish in the sea. More than that, probably, and it is. You would be missing out if you sat and waited for some to, someone to wake up or make up their mind and realize that you're the best option for them. Get on, get go on the hell on, go on, go on, ah! Ah! go on, go go on, like go on with your life, like you know, like you you got. I'm trying to help somebody. I'm, I really, I really am trying to help somebody because I feel like there are a lot of sweet, nice people and being taken advantage of um, because people give them hope that what they desire, what they want will come around. And the truth of the matter is, that's not always true. So get up and move on. You think the person, you think that person is the one, but you made the whole thing up in your head. And that could also be true. Because some of y'all sitting around waiting for Tyrone. And Tyrone done been with Keisha for 17 years. Ain't married her either. But you think you the one. And he keep telling you, I'm going to leave her. Then she have a kid. She get pregnant. They have a pregnancy scare. She get the flu. She get a little minor, a minor cold. He got to stay with her to make sure she... Get your, get your... Get your... Get up and get out. Get up and move on. That's all I got to say. I'm waiting on Billy. Right. Waiting on Billy. Waiting on Ty. No. Wait on you. And don't wait too long. <laughs> Do not wait too long. There's so many people. There's so many things that you're holding yourself back. Waiting on other people. I cannot wait for. I got. I really got to record the vlog, vlog in just a minute. Because this is exactly what it's about. But. At a different angle. But stop waiting for people. Go do you. Go do you. And if they realize it in good enough time and you single, then good. But if they don't, do you think? Huh? I feel like I feel like mom. Do you think? Huh? Alright. Alright, next one. Alright, next topic is. Alright. Do you tend to put uh, <laughs> All these questions like go online tonight. But do you tend to put other people? Let me let me see. Do you tend to put others before yourself and always come up short? Do you tend to put others before yourself and always come up short? If you are this person, um, I recently had the conversation with someone who I love dearly, and I had to let them know you have to stop being everybody else's superhero and be your own. Be your own superhero. Be good enough for yourself. And especially if you're always coming up short. And I know um, we grew up on that whole, you know, God is going to bless you. Yes, he will. He definitely will. However, there comes a time where you have to wake up and you have to be like, listen, no, I can't do this for you. I can't keep, keep giving you $500 and 
my light bill or, you know, my light bill ain't paying, my rent ain't paying. No, make smart, wise decisions. If you can help, help. If you can't, it's okay to say no. It's okay to say no. Don't overextend yourself at the risk of losing yourself. Do not overextend yourself at the risk of losing yourself. If you keep helping, if you want to keep helping and helping and helping and you ain't never got, you ain't never moving on, you ain't never working towards your goals, you're always helping somebody else. And honestly, here's another thing. You help them and you go through, who you going to call on? And I'm not saying you do things for others just because they can do or they do for you. But listen, make it make sense, baby. If you keep doing for somebody and they never turn around and try to help you do nothing... I'm sorry, I can't help you no more. Uh-uh, because you're a leech. Can't do leeches. That season of my life is over. Let me see what y'all are saying. That part. Hey, listen. You can't be good to anybody if you ain't good to yourself. God is going to bless you. Others like my kids. Absolutely. Others like friends. I grew that about five years ago. I'll cheer you on, but I ain't running, I ain't running the ball for you. Can't do it. Cynthia, I felt that. That part, lol. Period. Per period. Listen, like you really have to, you really have to consider like all the choices that you make. Life is really about choices, and not just the choices that you know that you make for yourself, but the choices that you make in order to help somebody else. And not saying you do things to benefit yourself, but if it's draining you. Be smart. Like, like, be smart. If it is draining you, stop. I'm gonna end it. If stop being everybody else's superhero and save yourself. Should we be quick to let the past go? Yes. Um, stop dwelling on the past. Um, yeah. I think, I think if anything, you know, if, if anything we go back to the past for, it's to re reiterate the lessons that we learn from it. You know, learn and grow from the moments that are present. Um, the past is gone. And whatever happened is nothing but a good um, memory or sometimes adjusted expectation. I don't know. Um, but should we be quick to let the past go? Yes. Um, but learn the lesson. Learn, learn the lesson. Learn the lesson. Learn the lesson. The most important thing about your past is that you learn the lesson so you don't repeat them in your present and your future. So learn the lessons that are to be learned. Um, you know, I, I, I don't think we should. I, I think we should be quick, not so quick to let it go. Um, but I do think you need to get all that you can get out of it and let it go. Um, I have. All right, let me see. I really want to take all of the ones. Um, I have two. Oh my god! All right, I have one minute. All right. So how to deal? How to deal with doubting yourself in any area? Um, rehearsing. Oh, I have a minute left. All right, rehearsing it over and over. I wish I could dive into this a whole lot more. Um, you know what? I am going to dive into it a whole lot more because I'm going to save this and the other topics. Let me see. All right. Oh, I wish I could have got to all of it. I, however, I have a minute and 28 seconds left, guys. I want you to make sure that you click the link in my bio, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, playlists, my playlist, Chat with Miller 31819 are available on, um, on Spotify and they're about to be available on Apple Music in just a few seconds, just in about, in about a minute. So you guys will be able to go and stream it and like it and subscribe to it and do all of those great things that you guys do like share tag repeat all of that um but i appreciate each and every one of you guys for being here um let me see what you guys are saying you're in trouble if you can't trust your instincts yes 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 all of that i'm waiting on <laughs> waiting for when we act up jamal <laughs> speak positivity i love you all and as i always say at every closing of everything that I hope you guys are having an amazing day and if not I hope it gets a whole lot better from here don't let things stress you out don't let people stress you out live your life and live it to the fullest I love you all see y'all tell me if you want to do all the things I like
Tell me if you 